I remember I had a patient, a middle-aged woman who was a very beautiful woman. She had great big eyes. And I mean, this was in the days when, when we had AZT, but resistance had developed to AZT at that point. And I remember I'd talked to her and I was about to leave the room and she was giving me this look like she wanted to say something else. And I said, you look like you, you want to say something else. And she said, well, I wanted to say, save me, but I know you can't. Oh, you know, just people like that. You just, you remember and you wish you could have done more. First seen clinically in the United States in 1981, acquired immune deficiency syndrome or AIDS created a nationwide fear like few diseases have. It was an amazing uh, a new disease that came out of nowhere. Uh, no one knew the cause, presumably a virus, but nobody knew. There was a lot of uh, controversy about the disease, as you said, a lot of stigma, which still exists today. There was a couple patients, I think, when I got there in about 83, and uh, was kind of frightened of the patients, actually. I remember interviewing, standing in the doorway, and the patient said to me, you can come in. So it forced me to come in, and I sat down on his bed and talked to him. We didn't even know what it was. Um, and the patients would be admitted through the ER. They try to identify what was going on. And as we learned more, we started to realize what the infection was. But it was, there was so much unknown at the time. Unlike so many other diseases, AIDS brought fear, even panic, to those who encountered it. Stigmas and discrimination quickly gripped many who worked in or around the medical community. I remember some of my friends didn't want to be involved with me any longer because of I was working on the AIDS unit. Um, a lot of the staff didn't understand that on the other floors. So it was very new and a lot of people were frightened in the beginning. Because the community needed a champion to lead education and research efforts, the team at Henry Ford stepped up to the challenge, quickly separating themselves from others in medicine. I always felt fortunate that the hospital, you know, supported us. Um, I mean, there were some hospitals that just didn't want to have anything to do with HIV. And, you know, they, they let us go and do interviews on TV and radio and in the newspaper. And I became pretty well known in the gay community that way. And so more and more people came here. And at one point, after a couple of years, we were actually seeing two thirds of all the HIV patients in Michigan. As participants in national trials for AZT and other treatments, Henry Ford eventually helped give patients long-term solutions for their illness, an impossibility without a collaborative determination to never give up for their patients. I guess at the beginning it was almost um, hopeless. It felt like the disease was, was in charge, but then I think as time went on it felt like we were starting to get a better understanding. And our care that, that was delivered was multidisciplinary. It wasn't that you just saw the doc and just the nurse, or um, you saw a whole gamut of people, and you were taken care of by a team who all knew you very well. So I think that we, we were way ahead of the game, and I think we still are. We're still involved in grants. We still have the latest in medication, as well as that the staff here were so willing to open their arms up and provide care to somebody. And I don't think you saw that at, at all the other hospitals. And it wasn't just about any one person. It was about the team here. In terms of our legacy, I would say a lot of the legacies hopefully is yet to be written. There's still a lot more work to be done. And a lot of uh, things we would like to do, not only in this country, but also try, like many other institutions, to uh, work internationally, uh, both in uh, HIV and, and other infectious diseases. So I think there's a lot still that our division uh, has to give uh, and can learn from the rest of the world.